he is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can stand with boldness. Because he lives, we have confidence. Hallelujah. I have a very short message this morning because I want us to spend at least another few minutes just in worship. See, Easter is not about us. It's about him. It's not about us coming to have some fun. It's not about us hearing yet another word to encourage us. It's about him. It's the time when we say thank you to him for what he did. Because we would not be here if it was not for him. And that's, that's why I felt so much that we had to sing the kind of songs that thank him for what he did. The kind of songs that say it's all about him. It's not about us. It's about him. All about him. A hundred percent about God. Everything we do on this day should be about him. He did something for us. He laid down his life for us. Where would we be? This is the time to ask yourself, where would you be if he hadn't loved you? Where would you be if he had not paid the price for you? What would you be? Chances are high you would be, right now, you'd be sleeping off the worst hangover in your life, probably. And have nothing to look forward to except more hangovers. Drink the problems away, drink them for a while, sleep, wake up, take painkillers, drink again. Where would you be if it wasn't for him? He paid such a heavy price. He paid such a heavy price for us. We are not our ours anymore. We belong to him. We saw so many times we sing this song. I will give everything to you. So many times we say we surrender all. But in truth we don't. We retain control of our lives even as we claim we have surrendered them to him. Because truly if we had, every time he prompted us to pray we would pray. Truly, if we had, every time he prompted us to worship a little longer, we would worship a little longer. Truly, if we had surrendered to him the way we claim, if we truly had surrendered to him the way we claim, we would not be what we are now. We would be different. I don't know how you see it, but for me, I know one thing. What I am now is not, is not what I desire to be because I know there is more. There is more than what I have experienced. There is more than what I have seen. There is much more to this Jesus. Much more to this Jesus than what I have experienced so far. There is much more to this Jesus than what you have seen so far. Every time I see a miracle, Every time you're ministering somewhere and you see a miracle, all it tells me is that there is more that I haven't yet seen. There is more to this Jesus. But the thing is that we cannot get this more. We can't get to know him to this level without having an in-depth relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not here. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is not on earth. He is not in this room. The Holy Spirit is the one who is here. In fact, Jesus said, if I don't go, he will not come. He had to go that he may send the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus was here, he was limited to a, a location. He was geographically limited. The anointing was where he was. When he sent the Holy Spirit, he could cover the entire earth at the same time. So for us, we must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
the Bible says in Romans that as many, that is, that's actually Acts, but Acts says as many as received him, gave he the power to be called the children of God. And we know that Jesus said, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the power that makes you, that gives you the right to be called the child of God is the Holy Spirit. And they, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Let me read that scripture, Acts chapter 1. Verse 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yet he goes on to say, as many as are called, give he the power. True? True? Do we believe that? Hallelujah. Do we believe that? We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8. From verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, there is a difference between being sealed with the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you get the right to be called the child of God. But when you're led by the Holy Spirit, you become a child of God. There's a difference bet between having a right to something and actually having it. Most of us, we've received the Holy Spirit, but we are not led by the Holy Spirit. Because if we were led by the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't fall into the germs we fall into. We wouldn't fall into the trouble we keep falling into if we were led by the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between having the right to be called and actually being. Hallelujah. In fact, when you read Paul's letters, you find something very, very interesting. You see that he came from being called to be and then he became. Because Romans starts, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Corinthians, again, 1 Corinthians begins, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He went through a process. First he was called to be. Then he became. There's a significant difference between why would he write called to be at some point, and then at another point he begins to say an apostle. Most of us, we start by being called to be, but we do not instantly become what we are called to be. 